Good morning, good morning. So this is the early February edition um, of Coffee and Chats with Kate because next Saturday I will be landing back from New York, which sounds very glamorous, um, <laughs> very early on the Saturday morning. So um, um, there's no way I'd be able to do a chat after that, I'm afraid. I just need to be snuggling up at home and recovering from all um, a gorgeous few days away hopefully so yes this is an early February edition and so many people joining already wow I love it um today I am going to be chatting to two art can artists um Emma Tweedy who I see has just requested so we will go live with Emma and Mel did a similar request so we can get everybody in and we can start chatting all about art all about art morning there we go. Good morning. Thank you How for joining you? me as an early February um, coffee That's and chat good. session. Got the tea. Oh. Irish. Always love a cup of tea. Well done, you. I love it. So yeah, tea and tea and chat. <laughs> that sounds even more sort of um, gentle and wonderful way to start a weekend. Um, coffee is a bit like, let's you know, a bit, bit feisty. <laughs> Morning, good everyone. morning, Geraldine. Yay, I'm here. She is. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Phew. <laughs> good morning. Is this your first IG live? Um, I, I I did do one once with um, an art can artist actually, Elizabeth Elizabeth Mucker. Oh, oh, yes. You know, <laughs> color and sound, and um, yeah. So I have done it before, but all that always connecting bit always um me out a bit and the tech it's always about the tech isn't it yeah yeah <laughs> nice to it meet you emma is. i've never met you before me too melanie i was looking at some of your stuff online it's really interesting so i think this will be a good chat this morning yeah, yeah i was looking forward to it <laughs> good well part of the reason i do this is because um we're also busy and there are times when we have a lot of art can artist members and they are in different exhibitions don't necessarily overlap don't have those sort of conversation opportunities um, but I think there's always a synergy or there's always something that you can discover and find um, amongst the art can artists that just ends up with this amazing sort of connection. And for me as well, I often don't get to go to all of the exhibitions or, you know, meet all of the artists either. So it's, it's a treat for me too to be able to entice out your, your information about your processes and how you function as artists and why you're part of all of this. And it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice moment so thank you both so much for joining me this morning for our february early um coffee and chat or tea and chat in emma's um <laughs> and the herbal exactly <laughs> um so let's get going it's a pretty straightforward format and we'll just see where the conversation takes us but we'll um start with you emma if that's okay oh good morning morella nice that you joined us um when did you join arcan and why so I joined just under a year ago um, and really it was that kind of post-COVID life where, I don't know, this balance and juggle uh, of trying to work out where you're going when things are not going so great in the outside world. And actually I found during lockdown that community support was amazing. So for two reasons really to join to answer the question and not waffle. Um, firstly, I was really starting to look at more opportunities to exhibit yeah. Uh, that international kind of platform is definitely of interest. And then also that support network and quite a few people. I do know quite a few people in the network, even when you start to look through this, you oh, I didn't realise, you know, you're an ARCAM member. So there's yeah. that lovely sense of camaraderie. And if you're stuck or you want to ask questions about things, they're always kind of there for you, which I find so helpful. I work in the studio in solitude a lot. And um, yeah, just having those people to go to for occasionally the odd wobble less wobbles you know post-covid thank goodness but yeah they just kind of motivate you keep you going and I think that's such a valuable asset as an artist to have that in your little backpack of uh super strengths yeah 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 no and I do and I think actually um we've mentioned this on previous sort of chats that I'm no longer surprised, but I was surprised about how important the community actually was over and above the exhibition opportunities um, when it, this all sort of started building up. And it was something that we 
very early on decided really needed to look for look look after that aspect of it and actually facilitate it as much as possible so that the you know the chats can happen and easily and sort of without it feeling like you have to send any formal email or anything like that so that that connectivity is really important um that's why we're sort of looking at other platforms as well as sort of whatsapp to sort of make sure that there's there's sharing of that knowledge amongst the community because it's it's vast now and the knowledge base just if you think of every single artist bringing something unique to that that base of knowledge oh, we've got so much we can tap into it's just brilliant <laughs> so yeah i'm really pleased that you sort of identified that aspect of it as being something that was key and the whole solitude thing as well as an artist that was one of the reasons i organized a group show because that 10 years ago um to just for that reason i was on my own too much within my own practice so to be able to then share that with other like-minded practitioners and actually have almost that sort of crit opportunity or anything that you sort of have when you're training yeah it's um no idea what's going to turn into what it has turned into but oh, it's just brilliant yes. so um Melanie, do you do you what's um what's your sort of introduction to art well, can and, to, and why? I had to think actually. I had to think um when I joined first art and um and it was sometime in the lockdown, but it was actually at the end of twenty twenty. And um I just finished I'd done an MA that ended up finishing in the lockdown. So mm. um which, you know, I really enjoyed and I did like the connection with people and I felt having finished that then it, there was a sort of a void and with not very much going on. And I had followed you for a while. And um, I was at college with an artist, um, Katie, who, Katie Bowdry. She was the first yeah. art, an artist that I knew. And, um, and she spoke, you know, very highly. So I sort of had it, I'd kept an eye on it. And, uh, and then I went for it. So, yeah, <laughs> that's when I uh, did. And it, it was, again, that sort of isolation. Because um, my studio is at home. So once I'd finished at uni, then um, that sort of, it, it, I did feel very, so I didn't have the people to kind of say, oh, what, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? Or, and to give that kind of opinion. And um, so that was really kind of what I, I like the idea of exhibitions because I hadn't been very much of an exhibitor. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of felt that it was a kind of a gentle way to sort of dip your toe in um to the exhibition side without the kind of the rejection i mean you, you do get rejections and because it's not right but it seemed a much more um artist friendly way of doing it so yeah so yeah I know I and i think that's also something that i'm keen on that this is this is very much an opportunity to exhibit without having to rely on a formal gallery representing you or sort of um taking you on a, on a bigger sort of journey you are allowed to experiment with your exhibiting just as much as you experiment with your art and it should be that you should have that freedom to sort of take the path that you as a creative want to take as opposed to the sort of perceived perceived sort of traditional path that historically I suppose some artists sort of um, feel they have to only be successful if they followed that path or been given that opportunity and I, I personally think that's a load of bollocks because I think, you know, there just aren't enough galleries for artists. If you think how many creatives there are, it's just that's that's never going to work as, as a as a theory <laughs> or even in practice. So we have to sort of find these alternative ways to make our own opportunities with. Um, and I think developing as an artist, you have to exhibit as part of that progress that you're going through. Because it's only by exhibiting do you then have that real interaction with a, with an audience. Um, it's, but it's really good that you um, you do all sorts of exhibitions. You do ones that are geared towards people that is more commercial. But my art really isn't commercial. <laughs> so, um, but the fact that that is included, there's a space for it, yeah. and um, you know, so it celebrates. And I'm I feel very comfortable that you know my art's not sale, but it's not for sale. But there are things where it can sit there alongside you know other people. Yeah, those that. conversations can still happen. Yeah as opposed to it being purely for a monetary mm. sort of finale, um, which obviously would be a beautiful thing. But I think <laughs> I that's mind. also... I wanted to buy it, but... <laughs> no, absolutely. But in, in a strange way, then you've got more freedom by not having that yeah. as the aim or the as sort of objective, which is actually quite a... It feels very luxurious for an artist. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm so slightly envious. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic so let's let's move on then actually to sort of like medium and processes and um inspiration and if um 
we'll go back to you, Emma, if that's okay, just to sort of see where where are your inspirations from? What's your what's your processes and what is your practice? So really, you know, even you sent us a couple of questions in advance, which I find the process of thinking about that and sort of reflecting on all that really interesting because, you know, I think when I started, I kind of started with, well, I want to paint, what am I going to paint? And it was interesting, my go-to was landscape. And then I did a bit of a, uh, a sort of co-artist mentored conversation at the start of lockdown about why had I gone there instantly? And it, it actually transpired that it was the subject of self-identity that I was really exploring through the composition of landscape and layers built within it. So this much bigger kind of conversation developed about my inspirations are actually why nature. I grew up in Belfast, which was pretty hardcore, yeah. late 70s, early 80s. You know, we're seeing conflict around the world. And it's interesting because as an artist, you would say, what have I got to say that's interesting? But actually, I've lived, that. that's my lived experience. And you know, really at the forefront of that, my dad worked uh, in the Belfast Telegraph, which was one of the biggest newspapers there. So every evening we had news stories about awful things. You know, as a child growing up, that you kind of normalize it, but then later on you reflect back on that and you think that was just crazy. Yeah, really intense. My mother was a nurse, so she was very nurturing and a very sort of gentle uh, character. And so she just used to lift us and drop us somewhere really beautiful for an afternoon so you know and it's another anomaly of Northern Ireland because you could be at the beach in 15 minutes you yeah. could be up in the mountains in 20 minutes so the the geographic locations around you we were very lucky to access them quickly so actually nature was always our respite yeah. from hardcore conflict and I guess that answered the question of self-identity of why landscape and then as things have developed in my career, uh, increasingly, obviously Northern Ireland is a, a big, and Ar the island of Ireland is a big inspiration. But as I travel around the world and experience other cultures, I think there is this power that nature has that mm -hmm. I really feel personally connected with. And the more I've worked to channel that, the work has now developed into two things. So firstly, there's a relationship that the viewer has with the work. And it's a question I'll come back to a bit later uh, on in the conversation about how do I get the work to translate better because it doesn't really do it on two dimensional image formats. It's that experience of the work. And I always know yeah. when people are going to find the work because you see their head just going like this and they disappear into the work. And I kind of know that's my, my client now. But then secondly, I wanted to create an impact with the work over and above making the work. So the work does me a favor it lets me meditate when i'm doing it i go in the zone i'm in the flow then the viewer gets a piece of work that they can i call them little keys that they then are transported into this other world through and then probably the best layer of all for me is that i take quite a big percentage of every sale and i try and make an active difference in the world with the money that the sale has produced so whether that's social enterprise projects, whether it's environmental projects. So then at the end of the process, that positive energy sort of keeps on giving. So landscape has become this huge journey for me that has resulted yeah. in some really amazing things that I've been able to do and help people all around the world. It's, it's phenomenal. So I'm, I'm so privileged, really. That's amazing. Yeah. I think the, the unification of nature is something that we as humans need to just accept it's not it's, it's natural it is that is just something that is integrated and integral as to who we are as animals as well and actually we can learn a hell of a lot from that and actually find those moments of pause and peace to be able to sort of rebalance and also then regenerate yourself so that you can then actually continue that positivity and you obviously do that very very tangibly with the generous sort of you know aspects of sales and how that is then sort of fed back and this beautiful sort of circle of life that you actually as an individual artist have created exactly and then also i salute you that. this morning i salute you thank you hard, hard one you know it's, there's a lot of work goes into it my process as well is very involved um 
you know, that was again a gift that lockdown gave because the yeah. ability to come in every day with no distractions. I actually tried not to look at any form of social media or images just to feel the uh, materials and what I could do with them, how far I could push them, like daily recipes, daily experiments, which are so fundamental yeah. to any art practice. And yeah. that has definitely catapulted my work forward yeah. beyond the shelf out. So anyway envious that's again that sort of space and time <laughs> space and time it's like it, i do i know how difficult the pandemic was for a lot of people but i also know for a lot of creatives it was a it was difficult too but it also offered that space and time for reflection and individual sort of de development as a, that sort of creative yeah i decided to have a child <laughs> instead <laughs> which is a whole nother creative process but um that that's very much sort of consumed my time and space at that time <laughs> but you know it's 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 different parts but again i'm um, you, you're both making me a little bit envious today of just like oh <laughs> space and time um thank you for sharing that with us um, Emma. i'm gonna ask a very similar question to you and if you can sort of explain your sort of medium and process and inspirations as well yeah, sure. Um, I'm a textile artist, really, and um, it's very haptic and textual. You can see um, some of it there. And um, I do a lot of stitch work, really. That's really what I've been focusing on. And, um, and it involves also um, sort of dyeing of fabric. Um, a lot of this colour is um, from avocado skins. So that's, that's, that's been one of my uh, things for a while. Um, and for me... Um, it's really the doing of it. The doing of it for me is really important and the outcome is, is well, of the same importance or, or maybe not as much. Um, it's a kind of, a, it's very slow. Obviously, stitching is very slow and very immersive. So for me, that is a good thinking time as well. Um, I kind of think about things beforehand and then I kind of start and I don't really know I have a, a vague idea but I don't really know um quite how it's going to work or everything and as I'm working I'm kind of thinking about you know or this might go or that might go and um so that's kind of that's um kind of how I, how I work and um the main theme really that I focused on in recent years is motherhood um, I kind of did my dissertation about maternal ambivalence, which is like the tensions of motherhood, um, the kind of uh, contradictions between you know, wanting to be very nurturing and, and that side of it with the feeling of, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that kind of feeling. And, and particularly for my, my situation is I have a, a grown up autistic son. So that obviously adds another dimension. And whereas normally a child would uh, develop and grow into adulthood and become independent to a certain extent obviously there's always ties there but when you've got a dependent adult those ties kind of get stuck in that yeah. process and, and my art's really been exploring you know that that tension I, when I started I didn't envisage it as being a kind of cathartic thing it was just something that I was kind of thinking about but in actual fact it really has been for me a way of kind of working through things yeah um, I mean, in the lockdown, one thing that I did, you, you spoke about being very immersive and, and um, I had lots of this dyed fabric that I kept dyeing and you know, sheets and stuff and loads of it. And um, it was quite a difficult time because my son lives with us. <laughs> and uh, so one of the things that I ended up doing is I had all this fabric on the floor and I just sat and sewed it on the fabric and kind of sewed it together. And it was really kind of, as I stitched, it was like the thoughts were stitched into the fabric. And um, yeah, it was really kind of, uh, it was a really cathartic thing. So, so my work, that is kind of my inspiration for my work, really. Yeah. But I think um, historically artists have always used the tools that they have to hand, yours more, more literally, that it is, you know, you're much more of a, of a, the, the craft of it is then actually part of the tool and part of the conversation that is then the finished piece is sharing on whatever level that is and it's really interesting I think um, to have the confidence and sort of belief that the process for you is your art form and that is really inspirational because I think too too often artists sometimes forget that actually the process that they go through is is just as important as whatever that finished result is and then yes sharing that with the bigger audience means that those yeah. conversations can then happen 
but it's not the be all and end all actually your own conversation with your process is is the most important thing and then uh, it's almost that added sort of cherry on the top if it then has a bigger conversation with a new newer audience yeah and it that's that's the sort of process but sometimes I do, I think you know the artists that produce things thinking it's, as maybe it comes down to the commerciality again, it's like they are producing things knowing that it's going to sell, which sometimes mean that you lose that aspect of genius and gorgeousness that the freedom of doing something just for you as an artist has created. And often the pe best pieces of work are the ones where nobody's been watching you and nobody's been expecting you and nobody's been sort of waiting for it. And it's just then become something and maybe that that's the lockdown and the pandemic as well it sort of enabled that it's like it wasn't then going to be going into a gallery it wasn't then going to have a set sort of finished deadline or a piece for it for that sort of to be displayed so it could just be and that's yeah I mean that's I really lovely. Just, okay it's it's so fundamental now to my practice to be in a really positive slow uh, state of mind when I go to create and it, it links into actually perfectly this conversation because uh, you know I've done some events some slightly bigger exhibitions and when you're painting under pressure the magic hand does not deliver no it really so doesn't I, I've actually worked really hard on a daily basis to I, I'm really into meditation I, do, I try and do it every day if possible which is a lot easier than it sounds to really really get in the zone but I've got all these weird rituals that I do this studio now, <laughs> which are, you know, from my burning sage to my weird Japanese tea. You're the Rafa Nadal of the art world, huh? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Hopefully I don't scratch myself quite as much as... <laughs> no, it's just the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the processes that he needs to go through, obviously, to feel creative on, the, on a tennis. It's the same, I think, anybody who does a creative outlet. And I say sports people sometimes do as well, or musicians. There's, there is a... There is a red, red, readying yourself that is necessary. Yeah. yeah. But it just gets you into that sweet spot. And I find that then the mind just automatically recognizes those little trigger points working up to it. Yeah. And it becomes much quicker to access. And uh, it, I think the result is really that the quality of the work is consistently better than it used to be that that's probably the takeaway and that's yeah. something i'm again interested in so anyway but it's it's, help, it's mastering your thing. skill and it's mastering your own processes which then mean that the confidence is there but it's coming from you it's not coming from an expectation of where that works then going to go to and it's yeah, the same it's with the, the the sewing process but, yeah yeah and it's hard to access the subconscious and just, you know, getting it to just take over, which I think when you're time poor, that's a really difficult thing. So it's that always trying to find that balance between producing regularly. If, if you want to survive as an artist and you want to make a living as an artist, that, that was really the challenge. You know, I, I'm not in that position where I can just do art without it paying for itself. So it's something that, again, you always feel you're on that tightrope between selling and being pure and that's yeah. always a really cool balance right yeah. yeah absolutely i'd say yeah and there's no magic answer for that no <laughs> unless we can sort of go back really historically and we can all end up with really good um rich patrons who just let us be and then are just delighted with whatever it is that we create but um unfortunately we live in a slightly different society now so i anyway um thank you both so much for sharing all of that it felt um it's just so nice to hear and talk art um are either of you have we got any art exhibitions for art can at the moment are you um have you applied for things so uh, the beautiful thing about this year i have to say is that we have got so many of our artists who are actually wanting to curate so they are very much involved with the curating of all of the exhibitions for our 10-year anniversary year which just for me has got this amazing sort of synergy of what an ethos of what art can actually is that the artists do it for themselves on every level and the experience that they can get as as exhibitors but also as curators within our program is really um is really cool for me i think it's just fantastic so um but it does mean that i don't tend to have much control over any of the sort of curation of, and it's just these beautiful selections that are sort of coming together and each 
opportunity is, as you mentioned earlier, many individual. Um, so there's so many chances to sort of explore yourself if you want to sort of pull out some themes or ideas that you're working towards that might fit for that particular exhibition or not. And then you could just cheer other people on doing it instead. Mm -hmm. But have either of you sort of spotted anything that you want to get involved with in Art Cam for our 10 year well, anniversary? I saw this question and I was like, Oh no, I haven't, I haven't got anything at the moment. Cause, um, um, but I, I did quite fancy the, the anniversary one, but yeah. because I thought, Oh no, I haven't got anything to say that I've, that I'm in at the moment but I did have a look back through last year at all the art can things that I actually was in and it's a really long list actually oh how cool uh, so I was just going to read it out yeah go on go on <laughs> love it <laughs> so I had a very busy year started off with the winter exhibition by KV yeah then I did the framing our future which was by Yesidy and Wilma and then I did the five woman artists that was the Instagram live with Elizabeth Oh, yes. Um, I went to Stockholm with yes. uh, Penilla and the Supermarket Art Fair. Um, I had a garden tea with Molly Lambourne. We raised money to go to Stockholm, so that was really good. Um, I was in Ar Artivism Insight. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was a lovely show. Kate, um, Kath. Kath, Kath Stocker. Yeah, that was that, that one. So I was in that one. That was in the, the, the gallery, your virtual gallery. Yeah. Uh, I did the postcard. Um, Vienna calling. So I went to Vienna. Oh. So that was really good. Again, I met some lovely art can artists. I met, there was Sarah and, and Molly was there again and Kat Coulter was there. So, yeah. so that was kind of, I felt really, that was good. And then I was in the Breathing Out, which was another one in your art can gallery. And that yeah. was, is, is it Kath, Kath Fenton? So that was my art can year last year. So I'm hoping that I shall have an equally exciting year this year. You're amazing. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, I'm I'm very <laughs> little, um, which is more sod's law than anything else i think i've seen a couple of things i sort of was like oh yeah i really want to enter a piece of work for that but unfortunately it's this thing it's just a dilemma at the minute where my process takes such a long time uh and i do have some commercial galleries that i'm um working with so they can be quite demanding and then no sooner have you painted a picture and you think, well, that's lovely. I must put that forward for an art cam thing. Then it's snapped up by one of the galleries, which is great because I'm, I'm selling and I'm really you know, being successful in that way. But then you sort of feel like, oh, my God, the whole reason I joined art cam was to try different things and to explore different audiences, which I still don't think I've kind of got to yet. Um, and again, this is maybe a good time to ask Kate that question that I, I referred to earlier about the you know, when you're submitting something, obviously it's a two-dimensional image, a flat image, and I'm just not sure how well the work translates when seen by one of the curators online, because everybody says, you know, all the artists are like, oh my God, you really have to see your work because it's so layered and subtle. Um, you know, it's that kind of moment that someone spends with the work that really gets it over the line, I guess. But I don't know how to resolve that issue between presenting online a very textured kind of product it's tricky it. we've got a few artists who have also um they really struggled during lockdown actually because everything was then suddenly in the virtual sort of space and at the beginning of lockdown especially there were lots of um virtual galleries but they they never really sort of gave the immersive feel that you sort of wanted um for it was all very sort of just 2d and and flat um, and part of us sort of creating our own virtual gallery was so that we could try and counteract that so that we could actually see things in 3D as well. Still not the same as seeing it in person, in real life, um, but at least it gave that extra aspect so you could see if something was relief or it had that different sort of depth to it. You actually could just spin it round if it was, you know, sculptural. And that felt really important that we were actually just, yeah, making something that was a little bit more don't just take it at face value you can actually then recognize that the artist and the, the artwork itself has got more of a conversation that it wants to share with you than it just being what your initial visual is but the only the only way to sort of get over that probably is just to put your work in front of real people as often as possible and it could be that maybe you just need to get some of your older pieces that you've got which you've just that they're there um and available to be sort of shown because they they haven't been sort of through the gallery or being sort of snapped up and then just get them in front of people because we are now 
our, our programming is very much more let's come and do things together in in real life and it's word of mouth then isn't it it's sort of you know the people like the curators will talk to the other curators the um yeah and then you just everyone will know that when your work comes through as an application don't take it at face value <laughs> but i don't think any creator really does to be honest i think um you always look at medium you always look at what actually is on that surface or how it has been created because that gives such an indication as to what it is you're actually looking at so maybe just a little Ed, I think about the captioning think about the medium how you're sort of sharing that of it just being a reminder not to look at it in just the 2D that it is but it is tricky because everything's online for applications these days you can't just rock up with your work and like go do you want it <laughs> which would like, be really lovely Academy to do but <laughs> yeah I did Royal Academy last week it was exactly the same I was like oh you know this piece is so interesting and that spec that they give for that photo are you just thinking it just doesn't translate in the same yeah. way which is the same but it's similar with sculpture actually the sculpture it, it struggles a bit online mm. um you know because it doesn't you, you know in, in a flat image it doesn't always sort of come across but yeah i mean i i just even before this call it was so uh, just a compliment to melanie because obviously coming from Ireland, I absolutely love texture and textiles. And, you know, I use a lot of linen in my work. I stitch in my work. Oh, so I got into looking at your work. I was like, this is so cool. You know, some of the stuff that you're doing is really, really experimental. And again, it just sort of really reinvigorated me a little bit when I looked oh. at that. Because I think you're, you're what I call really pure in your approach. It's <laughs> a really nice to thing have. to say. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm, you know, again, note to self, need to... It's that balance that Kate was talking about earlier, isn't it? About the commercial aspect, but remembering to still carve out time to really develop and be yeah. play that person. That you said I think everybody be. should play more. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, just rediscovering that that like, those happy accidents, and they are accidents, but they're happy. It's not, you know, there's no negative in finding different routes through just because unexpected things happen, and if anything it always opens up a new, a new sort of knowledge, ideas, theme, anything. It's just, but keeping yourself open to that. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that comes a lot through play, I think. Um, it's the same, it's same as you picking up the, the, your stitching is when things happen for you, man. It's the same. If I pick up a paintbrush, I'll have an idea, but it's only when I start painting yeah. when it actually become something that it's got yeah, to... I'd love to be able to... I, I like to paint. I do it with watercolour in it. But I'd love to be able to use that in... But it, that doesn't happen for me. I have to have something in front of me to draw. So it's strange, yeah. isn't it, how the, there isn't... And when I go to paint, there isn't an... There's no imagination there. I don't know what to do. <laughs> but yeah, yeah give you, give you a <laughs> needle and thread and you're off. Yeah. But then it, it should be that way. We should all be individuals. We should all find our own tools and our own part processes. We should find that thing that we sort of are able to express ourselves with without having to without words without conversation mm -hmm. you know we just need to find that thing and I think if you do then actually everything is possible because you've yeah oh. <laughs> okay, I really want to paint this afternoon now <laughs> let's see um so what's up next for you for you both what's going on next Emmy what, what, what are you up to next um, well, I was recovering. I had a solo show in Ireland in October, which was great. That's been oh, super wow. successful. It's the first time I've done a solo show. It was 16 large paintings. Oh, congratulations. Um, they're small, which was a bit of a mission. Um, but it's gone really well. I'm, uh, they've four left. <laughs> so that's been brilliant. Um, and also I've built a new customer base through that that really, I think, definitely the island of ireland get my work but increasingly i've had quite a few inquiries coming through from the states so that's obviously an area i'm looking to kind of expand into um i've got we are doing summer studios here with my um buildings we're 60 artists in our block in kingston so we're doing chaos summer studios um and yeah i was just looking at the calendar because i've got to be very careful not to overload yeah yeah um, yeah I've got, I'm doing a show in November for sure with a couple of artists. I think I maybe saw Sarah Cox pop up on um, online there as we were talking. So there's a group of five of us who've got together. A couple of us are art camp members and we're going to put on a little self-curated exhibition all sort oh, of brilliant. exploring about mind and nature. 
Um, and then I'm just, I'm also membership secretary for Richmond Art Society. So I'm helping sort of do stuff with their shows. I'll have work in that. Um, and then just, yeah, trying to really get a body of work together because I've had this problem of as soon as I paint something, it kind of goes. So I don't even have old work because it's also like literally. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Again, yeah, that's a good like, problem we'll to have. <laughs> it's like I'm like, like Princess and the Pea, but on canvases at the moment. It's like, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, you do have that thing we need to make work to have to submit to things. So that's always yeah. that kind of catch up for me so yeah just trying to stay really focused um you know i'm down at the studio every morning at seven i do my religious four hours a day it's oh, well the only done. way i can create the volume of work that i kind of need to put forward but looking for really interesting opportunities to take that work into different audiences i think that's one of my goals for 2023 it's a good one it's a good one yeah. What about you? Well, <laughs> that sounds very exciting. I must admit, I I've never had a, a solo show. Um, last year I had one um, with, with two fellow artists, so it's three of us, um, which I did really enjoy. So something, whether it will be 2023, but into the future, to have a solo show, um, I really would like that. Because I think um, my work is quite like... Um, look at sort of it's sort of like a capsule if you know what I mean um quite cohesive and I would love to see it all kind of you know just my work but whether that will happen in 2023 I don't know but definitely into the future um I would like to see that um more immediately I've got next week um where I'm free so I'm getting in the studio um I've got my thing that this kind of sculpture here which I did um, as part of the um, national platform artist um, I was uh, selected to be on their mentor scheme and part of it we had to do we had to create something uh, as a collaboration and um, I, so I've created this but it's going to be part of a kind of an animation it's a kind of like um, umbilical scissors it's a thing on for my other umbilical scissors and sort of cutting the the umbilical and I want to try and I, I don't really have very good technical skills at all but um, I've, I sort of want to try and take it into the maybe sort of animation or video or something so that's my kind of challenge going forward so but we'll I, see. But I do have next week where I've, and my studio is tidy I tidied it um, over Christmas <laughs> ready and i'm getting in there and gonna get started so yeah oh, <laughs> very exciting so watch this space everyone yeah exactly watch this space <laughs> oh fantastic